Greetings. In this video, I'm going to be talking about mirror scrying. Mirror scrying is a form of divination, much like tea leaf reading, palmistry, tarot cards, or the talking board. The idea of mirror scrying is to stare into this by candlelight in a darkened room. To stare at something until you get some sort of uh, visionary experience. And if you're staring at shiny objects in the dark for a few hours, eventually you probably will see something. The same phenomena can happen if you were to look at someone's face in the dark for long enough. Paranormal investigations, if you spend a lot of time in the dark uh, looking around, you might start to see something in the objects in the room, or if you look at your friend's face, it might look like it changes. That is uh, essentially an optical illusion, and the same thing can occur when you look at your own face in the mirror, if it's a black mirror or a clear mirror. This is the same idea behind a crystal ball, and essentially what you're doing is looking in, in the dark, and eventually seeing something. And that's iconically what the psychics that we think of, what they do is to um, look into the crystal ball until they see a vision. But mirrors are essentially the same idea, but with a flat surface. And so if you look at this, it looks like a void that extends out into nothingness. It looks like an abyss. It looks like looking down a well. And so that's kind of the idea of having a black mirror, something that looks more void-like. And this mirror I actually got at the Mothman Festival from my friend Alex. And what he's obviously done here is taken a uh, picture frame of some swans there and unscrewed the things that keep it in place, flipped it around, and then painted the glass black. You can take any picture frame and paint the back of the glass black and put it back in, and there you go. It's no different than any other black mirror. Of course, you'd have to paint it well enough so where you can't see the image behind it if there is an image behind it. But as long as you do that, you have the black mirror effect. The proper way to set it up is that the light produces a dull sort of glow. The candle only needs to put enough light that you can see just a little bit of your surroundings, just a little bit of sort of the, the shapes of your face, the shapes of things around you. It shouldn't be so bright that you can see the room, and it shouldn't be so dark that you can't see anything. It should be a very dull sort of glow that you can sort of just get the silhouettes and a little bit of the shape of yourself in the room around you. And so I've looked into black mirrors before, and essentially what you often see is your face becoming more skull-like, because the shadows that are cast upon the face um, cover the eye sockets, the bones of your face stick out more when they're cast in shadow, and so if you stare long enough, your eyes will try to adjust to the darkness. They'll try to see what's actually there. It will trick yourself. It's, a, um, it's an optical illusion. And so eventually, uh, what you see there, which looks like your face in the dark, might eventually turn into a skull. And I've seen that before. If you stare at your face in the mirror, eventually your eyes will start to adjust to the, the darkness and you can start to disappear. The actual the image of you in the mirror will start to disappear as your eyes adjust to the darkness and it sort of blanks out your silhouette there and it's just black. And so I've seen that. And if you look at that long enough, then um, your eyes will adjust again and you'll come back into view, like you'll fade back in. And uh, I find one thing that happens is if something like that happens and it startles you, you might readjust immediately, like you'll blink a few times and be gone. So you really have to um, sit there and meditate with it and let the image stay that way instead of immediately readjusting. Because if you readjust immediately, then it will be gone. And so you also have to not be afraid. It, remember, it's just an optical illusion. It's not really there. It's just an image in the mirror in the darkness. So the whole silhouette disappearing thing, I've actually had that happen for at least five minutes. That's the longest I've had that happen. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I've heard people say that when that once that happens, then eventually, you know, you'll see something. Once you blank out from the mirror, you can eventually something else will come into view. Uh, or you'll, your face will just turn into it. So I have seen interesting things because of the patterns behind me sometimes. Uh, for example, one time what was behind me was a blanket and the pattern of the blanket had shapes to it. Uh, those shapes took on new shapes and so I was able to see interesting things. Typically it's the lighter parts because the, the darker parts are blanked out, but um, from the white pattern I saw like a white deer or horse. First it was a deer, then it transformed more into a horse, and then it was gone. So that sort of thing happens. One time I saw what looked like a statue of Michelangelo's David. When you do black mirror scrying, you can use a candle or whatever light you want. The glare on the mirror created shapes, and the shapes formed beings in a circle dancing. And a lot of interesting things can happen with your silhouette. For example, I've got long hair, so when I looked in the mirror, at one point it appeared as if 
uh, my silhouette was replaced with a female form. At one point it looked like a man with a beard because the hair was dangling down. One time I saw what looked like a vision of Rasputin, the famous Russian mystic. Mirror scrying can be used by those who believe in the idea of a psychic vision, uh, or a spiritual vision of any kind. I would call it more of an optical illusion, but in the same way that dreams can inspire people, uh, optical illusionary visions can inspire people. And I believe that inspiration can come to you through the glass of a black mirror. For more about black mirrors, you can check out this book by Rosemary Ellen Gali, The Art of Black Mirror Scrying. What we're really dealing with here is reflection. The reflection you can get from crystal gazing or looking into a mirror. And water also has that reflective quality. In fact, it is said that Notre Dame, the famous prophetic visionary, did his scrying using a bowl of water. He would look into the bowl and then take a wand or some sort of instrument and tap the surface of the water, thus creating the ripple effect. Within the moving water, he was able to see visions. Likewise, any reflective surface can be used for scrying. This is created from a picture frame, a simple painting, and all that needed to be done was for the glass to be removed, painted black on the back, and then put back into the picture frame. And so there you can see this black mirror can be set up properly so that you can see the entire room and get a better vision of yourself. There is a certain sentimentality and ritualism in making a black mirror as well, and so many people would see tremendous value in having a mirror that they themselves created. And the image behind the black glass, which cannot be seen, is an image of deer. And so I like the idea that somehow this mirror sort of implied that, that maybe you could see something like that in the mirror. Of course, based on my prior visual image of seeing a deer or a horse-like uh, shape in the background. And so that is a very nice black mirror. Even the surface of your cell phone or laptop screen can create a black mirror. Thus the name of the horror sci-fi anthology Black Mirror, which warns of the danger of technology. Speaking of technology, it would seem that whenever there is a new invention or a new idea, someone somewhere is taking it spiritually. For example, Black Mirror Scrying goes all the way back to the creation of the mirror. As soon as people were making these glass reflective objects, people were using them for spiritual purposes. Likewise, with uh, the radio, with the invention of the radio, people immediately started trying to use it to communicate with something else and you see that reflected in the modern scan radios that paranormal investigators use. Whenever there is a new invention, someone somewhere is taking it spiritually. In fact, I've seen people set up a laser keyboard and use it sort of as a Ouija board, waiting for a spirit to tap on the letters. Because mankind is very much a logical animal, but also a superstitious animal. People create things that are practical and useful, but they also use those things for strange things, for the spiritual. So that's the dual nature of mankind. We strive to create, we strive to invent, we strive to be logical, but we also have the impulse to be illogical. Mankind is compulsively spiritual. And so even everyday objects and inventions that we create, we ultimately also end up using those spiritually. And there is a variety of opinion what people think the visions in black mirrors are. Some people say they are psychic visions. Some people think they are manifestations of the dead. Um, I don't think so. I think they are more illusionary visions that come from the subconscious that are interpretable like dreams. And it strikes me that mirror scrying is a, a metaphor for the subconscious. What you see is something that comes to the surface. Likewise, it should be said that some people don't like black mirror scrying in the same way that people don't like uh, the Ouija board or other such things that they find uh, too weird for them or too scary. I don't really think there's anything scary about a black mirror or doing scrying of any kind, be it mirror gazing or crystal gazing or looking into a bowl of water. Uh, it can be boring sometimes, but I think it's interesting uh, form of meditation. So if you're doing meditation and you need something to focus on while you're doing that meditation, you can try looking into some reflective surface and seeing what you see. And I think the visions can be quite helpful. They can be quite uh, illuminating. They, they are interesting. I'm not saying that every single thing you see has some sort of meaning. It could just be the way the shadows lay, the way the background looks, in the same way that not every dream has some uh, complete concrete meaning. It could just be like, oh, that background piece kind of looks like that if you look at it in the dark from a certain angle. So I think the metaphor still stands, that what you see in the mirror comes to you from the subconscious. It comes up to the surface like the Leviathan rising from the ocean, like an alien being coming to you from the void of space, or like some bizarre creature that crawls from the depths of the inner earth. All of these things come from the subconscious to the surface. And the black mirror is exactly that reflective surface that you can see those visions in.
And since we're talking about voids in the abyss, I feel I would be remiss to not say that famous Friedrich Nietzsche quote, Be careful when wrestling with monsters, lest ye become a monster yourself. And if thou gaze long into an abyss, the abyss will gaze into thee. And in a way that is a poignant quote for the subject matter here, because when you look into a black mirror, what you're really staring at is yourself. Both yourself in silhouette, and the images of your mind as well. So what is it about skulls? Why is it that when we look into the black mirror, we often see skulls? I think it is simply the way that the facial features look when shadows are applied to them. If you look closely, if there was dark shadows across my face, the eyes would sort of disappear into the darkness. The cheekbones would be exaggerated. The way the face would look would look more and more skull-like, until eventually what you would see would just be a skull. But not only that, when I was once doing mirror scrying in a hotel mirror, the window behind me and the curtains all fell in such a way that it looked like a skull with myself in the center, and then of course, I disappeared. But that wasn't something that could be applied to just the way the face looks in the darkness, that was the room itself turning into a skull. So why so many skulls with the mirror scrying? I'm not sure, a lot of people would probably be freaked out by that. Myself, not really. I like to have at least one Halloween decoration skull lying around to remind myself time's always ticking. Memento mori. So if you want an exact picture of how I do Black Mirror Scrying, this is what I do. Now, you don't have to copy this. You can do whatever you want to do on your own. Do whatever makes you feel comfortable, whatever method you think is best for Mirror Scrying. If you want to do that, figure it out for yourself. But this is what I do. I set up the Black Mirror with a candle beneath it. And then I look at the mirror and the background and while I'm doing this, I set up a hourglass, and I flip the hourglass over, and I let the sand pour out until it's been an hour. And then I'm done, or if I didn't really see what I wanted to see, I didn't really get what I was looking for, I'll flip it over again. Likewise, you can also use headphones to listen to music, be it meditation music, or some sort of uh, mantra, or chant, or something like that. You can also do that. If you wanted to get really creative, maybe you could use uh, our, a scan radio and listen to that so you can hear something that would coincide with the visions you're seeing. That would be interesting. But yeah, that's essentially what I do is I do that and uh, sometimes I'll put an icon of maybe if I'm trying to see something specific or if I'm trying to get some sort of insight on a specific question, I'll put uh, an icon of what I'm asking the question about in front of the black mirror. Also, it doesn't hurt to ask questions. Something you can do uh, for before going to sleep at night is ask yourself a question and see if the answer will come to you in your dream. The same thing can be applied here. Before you look into the mirror, you can simply ask a question. Say, what, what do I need to do? And then look into the mirror, and maybe a vision will come that will answer your question in some sort of symbolic way. I like to interpret dreams in the same way I interpret visions, in the same way I interpret tarot cards. It is, it is a vision, an image, that can be interpreted through symbol and meaning of some kind. And of course those meanings are subjective. Symbols are subjective and contextual. So various different traditions and divinatory practices have used scrying and mirror scrying. Uh, for example, John Dee of the, uh, the sort of Enochian magic, he did that sort of thing from time to time. As I mentioned, Nostradamus supposedly did the same as well with the bowl. I have done the method of tapping on the surface of the water. I haven't really seen anything else too interesting. I don't have a crystal ball, unfortunately, so I can't really speak to that but I assume it's very similar to the bowl or the mirrors. I think the method of scrying I most enjoy is the big mirror that kind of takes in the whole room, and so I put that above my altar. The hand mirror is good too, but mostly what you'll see is just your own reflection, your own face, sort of in a portrait. So the larger mirror is better for taking in the whole room. And so that really, in a nutshell, is scrying. So if you want to do black mirror scrying or any form of divination, I definitely recommend it. My favorite divination is always going to be the talking board because of the, the communication that you get. But if you're looking for something more image-based, you can try the Black Mirror Scrying. So if staring into shiny objects for hours at a time in the dark sounds like your idea of a good time, be sure to pick up a black mirror or any other such reflective surface and see what you can see. So if you want to try scrying and you don't have a black mirror, you could simply use your bathroom mirror, your uh, phone screen, or your laptop screen. This can be done with non-black mirrors as well, with the silver, or I guess clear, looking mirrors. I recommend a comfortable seating position and a sort of meditative attitude if you're trying to do something like this. So that's been my thoughts on mirror scrying. Thanks for watching, and mountaineers are always free.